Good morning, this is Deborah Arca with the Pathios Book Club, and today I have with me the author of a new book, uh, The World is Not Ours to Save, Finding the Freedom to Do Good, and uh, the author is Tyler Wick Stevenson. He's joining us today from Toronto, um, where he is pursuing uh, his doctoral degree in theological studies, and is also um, an associate pastor at an urban, a small urban congregation. So good morning, Tyler. Good morning. Great to talk to you, Deborah. Thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, it's um, my pleasure. Yeah. So this book, The World is Not Ours to Save, I'm just going to jump right in and say, tell me about this title, because isn't, um, aren't we, you know, God's hands and feet in the world? Isn't the world kind of ours to save in some sense, along with God? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do think that to some extent we are, we are God's hands and feet. We read in 1 Corinthians about being ambassadors of the, of the ministry of reconciliation, that it's that through us, God is saying to the world, be reconciled to me. So, I mean, I'm, in, in no way is this a book that denies that we've got something to do, that, that um, it's important for Christians to be out um, in the world spreading the, that message of reconciliation. Um, but as a, a generation is really animated by a sense of the wrongs of the world and is looking at it through a biblical lens, I mean, they're, they're reading, they're, they're looking at the pages of their Bible and across those pages they're seeing this hurting, broken world and there's this dash to serve it and I think that is a wonderful thing. Uh, but for it to endure, I really believe that we have to recognize that the fruits of our labor don't belong to us and that our call is to be faithful um, rather than efficacious. Mm -hmm. So um, I imagine this book is um, as much of a personal story um, out of your own personal experience. You're, you're a well-known um, Christian activist. You founded an organization called the Two Futures Project, um, which is a movement of Christians for the global uh, abolition of nuclear weapons. Um, so you've obviously uh, spent much of your life um, as an activist. So, so does, did, this, did this book really come out of your own experience and in what way? Yeah, I would, it definitely did, and I would say in a couple ways. I mean, on the one hand, it's a book of stories. Um, you know, there, there's theology, there's Bible in it, but fundamentally this is a book of the stories that led me to found um, the Two Futures Project, um, and the stories of my own lessons as an activist. I mean, everything I critique in the book is first directed at myself um, because I've known it firsthand. And second, it's a book of stories of the people and causes that have inspired the particular theology of activism, um, the particular theology of doing good in the world um, that the Two Futures Project runs off of. Um, and the second way that it's uh, a, sort of a really personal book is that, you know, I was, I was immersed in the world of Christian activism for about five straight years. I mean, I lived and breathed that I worked way more than full time um, in, in this domain. Um, and as I worked through what that meant, um, I, I, came to, I came to a different place than where I'd started. And so the book is, in a sense, um, me putting on paper what that working through actually looked like for me. Hmm. So it's, it's, it, it's almost like your own theological reclaiming or theological um, exploration of what it is to be a Christian activist. And in, and it's, in a sense, it seems like you kind of came up with a, a new vision for Christian activism um, that you're hoping to um, share with your readers here. Yeah. What, what is that? So what does that look like for you, this kind of, this Christian activism that um, is, is, you know, the result of, of, your, of your experience and you're working through it theologically? Yeah, yeah. Um well, the, the, the book's divided into two parts, um, and the first part um, takes apart the, 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 the aspects of contemporary Christian activism that I think are, if, if not wrong, they're at least dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, the way that we can imagine that we're supposed to be the hero of the story, mm -hmm. or the way that we, I think, chronically underestimate the challenge of the problems that face us. Uh, and overestimate our tactical responses, you know, like, oh, I've got this massive global problem, so I'm going to like a Facebook page, and that there's some correspondence there. Um, so it, it goes through that. The, the second part of the book um, is an extended reflection on Micah 4, 1 through 5, uh, where Micah, the prophet Micah is talking about his vision for the kingdom of God that he sees. And I unpack that, that passage and see within it uh, a threefold peace that Micah is talking about, a vision of peace. Uh, peace with God, peace among the nations, and peace in the community. And then each of these I see as having three facets as well. 
Um, and what I'm suggesting uh, for, for anyone, whether or not you call yourself an activist, I mean, really, anybody who, who wants, who sees their faith in Jesus, who sees the command to love their neighbor as themselves, think that it's important to, to you know, live your faith out loud, as it were. That, that's who this book is for. Um, so how do we approach doing good? Well, I think we take this kingdom vision and we, we, we orient ourselves to it. And it's a, it's a holistic vision. It's not, you know, the, it's not seeing the world as 10,000 fires to put out. It's seeing the world as, um, as the, the field of our service um, viewed through the, the vision of the com coming kingdom. And so I get into the practical nature of what that looks like. I get into stories of, of what that faithfulness looks like. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's, it's, it's this kingdom-focused activism that I channel through a lens of vocation. That's, that's the other major component of the book. Um, that really has emerged for me in my life, um, that has given me strength, that has given me freedom, um, and, and that I wanted to be able to offer to readers as well. Yeah, and that sounds really important. Um, we were talking before we started filming about the importance of slowing down before we yeah. act in any way, and slowing down and listening and uh, discerning uh, what... Um, you know, a, 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 a faithful response might be. And, you know, you hear a lot about um, discernment is about saying, uh, is not about saying, uh, yes, it's about saying no to many good things. Or it's, it's about mm -hmm. figuring out of all the good things we can do, of like the 10,000 fires we could put out. Right. Put out what, is, what is God really calling me, my community, um, given right. my particular gifts to do? So really important work, it sounds like. Um, I want to go back to the social media piece. You, you talked about the incongruency of liking um, a page on, um, I don't know, what was it, global warming or global trafficking or something? Yeah, well, pick, pick your poison, pick, really. Pick your thing, right? And that in doing that, we have some sense of, of, of contributing to that cause. And do you think social media has been a positive or a negative in terms of um, activism, Christian activism? Yeah, both. Um, I think on the one hand, it has... Uh, you know, it's enabled anyone to sort of be a micro-activist of sorts that gives any person, hypothetically, the capacity to, you know, share about something that they care about um, and to rally a, a, a virtual community around that. Um, in, in, in some senses, that's, that's a good thing. Um, in, in other ways, though, I, I think it does sort of, um, it does blunt our sense of the, what it means to have skin in the game. Um, I'm, I'm really convinced that, that, that commitment involves sacrifice and the, that, that good activism always involves sacrifice. And if, if it doesn't involve sacrifice, then you're going to get the same out of it that you've put into it, which is not a whole lot. Um, I, I think, you know, we think of typical activist culture as coming out of the 1960s. Of course, there's a history of Christian activism with the likes of Wilberforce that extended way before that. But of course, the 1960s was also a great era of Christian activism with Martin Luther King Jr. I mean, that's, that's uh, the civil rights movement was faith-based activism. Um, but what those kinds of movements really demonstrate um, is, is that you have to have a lot of people who are making deep commitments to something. And I think that um, part of what what what's a problem in, in contemporary in our contemporary climate? It's not the it's not the fault of social media, but social media enables it. Is that they were just barraged with this this endless range of possible causes, or barraged with this endless range of global misery that we that we want to respond to, that everything in us calls to calls out to respond to, um, and and what that has the possibility of doing is sort of diluting. Um, our capacity to make genuine commitments um, to to a particular thing. So, like you said, discernment is you know less about saying uh, yes than it is about saying no to a thousand good things. Um, the way I talk about vocation in the book is about accepting my limitations. Um, that being called to this thing means I'm not called to anything else. Um, and asking myself, yes, w what are the gifts that God has given me um, that I can then um, put to use uh, for the sake of the kingdom um, and and accepting the fact that I can't be all in all, uh, that I can't carry the world on my shoulders, in effect that I can't um, I can't be the Jesus of Colossians 1, the one who, who the, this cosmic Christ um, who, who carries everything. Um, my job is to be, is to resemble the Jesus um, who, who ministered uh, on earth and, and 
and, and to play my small part in being his body, the church. Yeah. And now I really get the world is not ours to save. We're not, we're not about saving the entire world. We're about uh, joining God in, in particular ways, in particular areas. And, um, and so less about seeing that we have to do everything, but figuring out what is the one thing or the couple of things that are the most important and that we're particularly called to do. Um, right. So that's lovely. Um, so let's just let's just close by. So what's what are a few pieces of advice you would give the young Christian activist that is out there and feeling a little overwhelmed by all of the many uh, issues, problems, uh, miseries in the world, um, but wants to do something? What 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 might what might you advise? Yeah. Um. I think on the one hand, uh, you know, this book is meant to be a word of encouragement. So I would say embrace these passions with everything you've got. I mean, I've, I've been there. I, I know exactly how it feels. And it's a, it's a wonderful um, time and gift um, to be able to give oneself wholly, wholly to a cause. Um, the other thing that I would say, though, is, is, is balancing this with the recognition um, that our job in history is not to exercise control. Um, I was talking with some... Um, some people the other day and I was explaining the premise of the book and they were saying, well, you know, that's not good enough. Society's falling apart. We need to, we need to get in and fix it. And I was reflecting afterwards, I thought to myself, there's nowhere in the Bible um, where Christians are told it's your job to fix society. Mm. Um, there's everywhere in the Bible where it says it's your job to be faithful to God. And now depending where you are, that could have massive social implications. I mean, the, the faithfulness of Christians has changed societies, but that doesn't mean that being a faithful Christian requires changing societies. And so what I think we're, we're called to recognize is, is our place of humility, a place of meekness. And, and for, the, for the activists, then, I can tell you only what has sustained me and what I found necessary um, over being immersed in this world um, is building... Um, building a life that's faithful from beginning to end. And that means things that aren't efficacious in fixing the world. That means justice and or, uh, that means, um, you know, um, uh, worship and discipleship and evangelism. I mean, these, these sort of core practices of the church, we can't forget these along the way, but, but neither can we have a church that is, that turns a blind eye toward justice and turns a blind eye toward war and, and, and to the absence of peace or, or that denies human dignity. And so it's really just about accepting that the kingdom of God, uh, an orientation to the kingdom of God yields a beautifully holistic life. And it's not to die any of that. I mean, it's, it's not all activism. It's, it's fun and it's joy and it's loafing around and, um, at, while at the same time, um, never forgetting that there's this broken world that we're, that we're faithful in. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like a very important book for our time. The world is not ours to save. Finding the freedom to do good. Thank you, Tyler. This has been very illuminating, insightful, and we appreciate you taking the time. Please, um, all of you watching, go to the pathios.com book club for more on this book. We have an excerpt. We have um, another interview. We have bloggers blogging about um, what cause fatigue looks like in their life and how they have... Um, uh, you know, explore that and move through that. Um, so thanks for joining us. Tyler, thank you again. Blessings on your uh, studies and your, and your work and your ministry. And um, thank you all for joining us this morning. Thanks so much, Deborah.